For more on the influx of women in politics globally, my colleague Junwei Sum spoke with Susanna Welford. She's an executive director of Running Start, which is an organization dedicated to educating young women about the importance of politics while giving them the tools to achieve greater political power. Beyond equal representation, she explains, the other benefits of having women in politics. I think in the past, the way that women work to get um, more equal representation was they use the argument that it's fair. So women are over 50 percent of the population, and so, of course, we should be in power. We should be running things. And I think that argument only gets us so far, because I think that the bottom line is, well, so what would be the effect? Does it really matter to have women in politics? And my favorite, actually, um, statistic comes from the business world instead, where they show that if you add women to the highest levels of corporate America, if you add them to boards, if you add them to um, the leadership in companies, that those companies actually make more money. And that's just, that's such a beautiful example of we need the diversity of women. We need the different ways that women think. We need their leadership styles. We need their different problem-solving skills because we're missing that right now because right now the leadership of our country, whether it's in business or politics or practically any field, it tends to be monolithic. We have generally older white men. And study after study shows that if you add diversity, into decision making, you get better decisions. So in the US at least, it's been called the year of the woman because of the record number of women running right. for uh, midterms. Uh, what do you attribute the surge to? I, I honestly, I bring it back to Hillary Clinton. I think that for a long time, the country was complacent in thinking we're moving along this trajectory of women's rights. And when she lost, I think a lot of women had a wake up call like, wait, this was supposed to happen, and yet we saw sexist things stand in the way of her winning. And so I, I think, it, I really do think it's this big awakening of all of a sudden, maybe we're not as far along as we thought we were. And maybe it does, maybe it has to be us. Maybe we're the ones who have to run for office to change things. And in other countries as well, we're seeing uh, more women coming into positions of power. For example, in Spain, there's now a majority yeah. female cabinet. Uh, yes, Mexico, yeah. yeah. Mexico has a new president, and he's saying he wants to bring more women into their cabinet. And even in Tunisia, recently, their capital, Tunis, they just yeah. elected their first female mayor. Um, again, do you think this is really a worldwide um, kind of phenomenon? And what is the rationale that's driving all this? So I think for a while the world has been looking at girls and realizing we are not putting any resources into girls and they grow up into women who are not as well educated, they don't, um, they, they're not able to um, help our, the country's economy as much. And so there has been more emphasis on, okay, well wait, maybe we should train the girls and actually help them to succeed at a higher level. And I think that that move is now moving into maybe we do need changes. Maybe what's been working in world governments isn't the best we can do. And if we bring in new faces, we bring in um, not just women, but I mean also diverse people who have not been in the seat of power before, that things will get better. And I know you've done training both through Running Start and through other organizations abroad. Yeah. Um, what do you see, what have your experience been there in terms of the reaction from the people both you trained as well as people in positions of power, which may not, you know, uh, traditionally have in involved women as much? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the most interesting thing that I've found um, in training abroad, and I've trained in really disparate places from from Belgium to the Maldives. Um, so, you know, different um, cultures and um, different sort of education levels. So the, the things that are holding women back from seeking power, they're very similar, regardless of where you are. I mean, I, I hear the same things in, um, in a classroom in Washington, D.C., as I do talking to um, young activists in the Maldives. And it's that they don't see themselves as the people who really have the right to step into power. They don't feel qualified. They don't know the path. Um, they don't feel like they have the skills to do it. And of course, around the world, there are bigger outside obstacles that are holding women back, even if they're able to, um, to get past the internal barriers. But I think you know, it's so incredibly important to work with women and tell women how important it is for them to see themselves as leaders, to build up their confidence and to help them to really understand it's, it's on them, like we need more of them to get into politics and government so that the world can function better.